Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, we have a very special guest. She's part of our podcast community. She has her own podcast on our channel. She is a coach and an expert in astrology. And today, she's going to teach you how to actually learn how to read your own astrology chart. There's a lot of information in there, and some people get confused. So today, she's going to break it down very simplistically so you can understand how to read your chart and see what's ahead for the new year. So... Claire, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. You know, tell everybody a little about yourself and tell us how do we read our own chart? Like, how do we break it down? Yeah. So, I mean, I think anybody that's ever pulled a birth chart is it's like it's so daunting to look at it. So at me being one of those people years ago when I first pulled my birth chart. And I think because of that, a lot of people look at it and move on and never look at it again. <laughs> and, and this is where I differ from most people, because when I found astrology, I guess this most recent time around, I'll say, because yeah. obviously I knew it existed. This is part of my story and who I am to answer the other part of your question. Yeah. I am a self-discovery coach. That's what I like to call myself who specializes in astrology and human design, because yeah. really that's, that's more of what I do than just, I'm not a straight up astrologer. I'm not a human design expert. I use these tools because I know them pretty intimately. And I also know how to apply them to the self-discovery journey, to understanding yourself, taking self-awareness to the level of self-actualization, where you can actually change the way you're behaving, not just know certain things about yourself and then never do anything about them. Right. So that's how I use these tools, which hopefully if you're listening, you can understand why I think they're so powerful because yeah. of that. And why on my journey, when I was just going through my own self-discovery exploration process, essentially, I was so lost. I was so confused. If you've listened to the other episodes yeah. on our series here, and it's like these systems were really showing me more nuance about myself than I had ever seen, heard, felt truly ever before in my life. And I will say even now several years in up to this point. I just, I've never seen, felt as seen as I do by these systems. And, and it really has helped me to just understand myself so much better and, and feel more validated in all of these things. So I went deep down the rabbit hole of, of learning how to actually figure them out and got over the hurdle of what am I even looking at right now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think what you mentioned initially is exactly what stops people. It's like the complication of it all. There's yeah. so much, even if you do dig past the surface and you you see the chart and you're like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. Yeah. And you start to Google things. You start to pull out a book, listen to a podcast, whatever it is. Yeah. It's so much information that I think it can feel like you're drinking from a fire hose. It can feel very overwhelming. Yes if you don't know how to break it down. And I yeah. think that's where most people get hung up with this. I was talking this morning actually to a client of mine and she was talking about the full moon reel because today's a full moon, by the way. Oh, I didn't know <laughs> as that. As we record, yes, okay. uh, full moon in Taurus as we record this. So she was mentioning how she loved the interpretation and she was like, I'm still just learning how to actually understand what this means yeah. though. You know, I, right. I get so confused about the houses, the planets, the signs, like there's all of these different yeah. things to look at. And I shared with her that when it really started to click for me was when I stopped trying to look at every single thing all at once. Okay. When I broke it down into planets, signs, and houses, okay. and literally just learned the basics of each one of those things okay, in silos, don't try to connect the dots, but if you don't even understand what you're connecting the dots between, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be very complicated. And I loved the analogy she used. She was like, wait, this actually makes so much sense. I'm going to try to play with this because I've been trying to eat the whole buffet at once. And maybe I should just try to take one bite at a time. Right. And I just thought that was a perfect analogy for how it kind of feels <laughs> when you're learning about this system. 
I love it. I love it. Because a lot of times, like, when I looked at astrology and even, like, other things, like, it was so much information to take in. Like, for example, when I looked at tarot cards, I was, like, overwhelmed. There was, like, all these things in the tarot card book, you know, all these cards, each thing, they, you know, and, and I felt the same thing. Like, I always was a big fan of astrology, but it was, like, always so much information and I felt always overwhelmed and I would have to go to somebody to talk to somebody and to have somebody read it for me because it was just it seemed like so much information now like what's the first thing like okay I want to get my I want to get my astrology read I want to be able to start learning more about myself and where I'm headed and a little bit of more you know what's going on with me who I am and where you know where am I going and how what are some things maybe I should you know start to work on and change What's the first thing we do to like you said you spread it you said the three sections so you broke break it up into three sections and then what do you do Yes. So to me, one of the biggest values of breaking it up into learn your planets, mm learn -hmm. your signs, learn your houses. Obviously, it helps because now you're learning the fundamentals. First and foremost, right it's helpful for that obvious reason. yeah What I would like to do one day is create flashcards of these things because I I think think that that would would be be great so, so valuable for people. I'm sure they exist somewhere too, you know, some rudimentary version of this. But anyway, I... I think that is obvious how that can be helpful, but the added layer of how it really just starts to make more sense when you approach it that way is that yeah there's parallels. There are planets that parallel themes that are specific to certain signs. Yeah. And there are themes specific to certain houses that parallel Theme specific to certain signs yeah and you start to see these this these uh similarities between the different components of a chart and it really helps you to start actually making sense of this language that you hear and you see all the time and you're like it's like these trigger words like every time i see something about jupiter i hear the word abundance i hear the word growth and expansion and it just starts to click that oh wow that actually is very similar to the things that I'm reading about Sagittarius. Oh, that makes sense. It's the ruling planet of Sagittarius. Oh, wow. That actually sounds really similar to the ninth house themes. Oh, okay. That's because Sagittarius is the ninth sign of the 12 zodiac signs. So Yeah. Right. it really ultimately what I always tell people, and I think this ties back to my, you know, my engineering problem solving math brain really. Yeah. It really is pattern recognition. That's what astrology is. Right. And it's so complex. It's not a casual like two things matching and making one. It's a Yeah. deep, complex pattern. And that's why I think a lot of people, it takes them a minute to get to the point where the pattern clicks. But once Right. it clicks, it really starts to make sense in a different way. So just to take it back to, to your original question, I think One of the things that I find very helpful is obviously understanding the basics of each of the planet signs and houses is one thing, but understanding the role that each of them play is the next layer of Right. that. Yeah. So recognizing that when we are looking at the planets in your chart, for example, Mm -hmm. and again, we've said this in previous episodes, but your sun, your moon, we're going to count those as planets just for fun because I Right. don't feel like saying something else. Sun, moon, Jupiter, Mars, all of those planets in your chart, that's going to tell you what energetic theme you're looking at. Okay. What part of myself am I diving into right now? Like for example, the moon, I'm diving into my emotions, my inner world, my kind of instincts, if you will, um, where, when you're looking at the signs, so Scorpio, Aquarius, things like that, the actual Zodiac signs, that's the next layer that you apply to it. And you say, okay, I'm looking at my moon, my emotions. Now I'm going to add this layer of the sign. That's going to tell you how Yes. that energy is showing up. I always think of the signs as what flavor Mm are hmm you expressing that planet through? Right. Like for me, I have a Pisces moon. It's very sensitive. It's very compassionate. It's very emotional. It's very open. Right. There's a lot of different words that can come with this. So the planets are what, the signs are how Yes. that energy is showing up in you. And then the last layer would be to apply the houses. 
to -hmm. this. So what house does this planet fall into? And this is going to tell us where, right? where in your life is this most likely to show up, this theme, this part of your personality? For me, I have an 11th house Pisces moon. The 11th house is all about social networks, connections, your dreams, really just kind of getting getting things out to the masses, essentially. Yeah. And so I have always, always, always had a really deep network of friends. I also find that it's easiest for me to share my emotions yeah. in those spaces. Not that it's not for most people, but honestly, it's not. <laughs> like if right. I'm, it, it's not for everyone, I should say. And, and yeah. that looks different in different people's charts. So just to give a, a really rudimentary example, I think that's where these the layers of understand the fundamentals, but then recognize what each of these components is telling you. And that's when you really start to connect the dots and make sense out right. of your chart. Now, you know, we I've asked you this question in previous, you know, episodes, but I think we should just like for people who didn't hear any yeah. episodes or maybe missed an episode, the houses. Now, when you hear the word houses, like everyone knows the signs, everyone knows planets, but when you when you refer to the word houses, what are houses so people understand that? Yeah, so I think the best way to explain this cuz most people have some level of visual learning yeah, <laughs> in yeah. their brain mm-hmm. is pull up a chart, pause this now, pull up a birth chart, whether it's yours or somebody else's, just just so you can have that birth chart wheel in front of you. And when I yeah. say a birth chart, what I'm going to be referencing is a, a Western astrology one. So don't type in a Vedic astrology one, because otherwise mm-hmm. this isn't going to make sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so pause, do that now. And so no matter what website you pull this from, no matter where you're populating a chart from, yeah, I always look at this as kind of going inward. Like if the the chart is a target, yeah. there's going to be different rings of this circle. The outer ring of the circle is always going to be the signs. Right. This is going to speak to which sign we're looking at. Sometimes it's going to say the word like Sagittarius. Other times it's going to be the symbol. Right. So just keep that in mind. The next layer in of this pie chart essentially is going to show you a bunch of little symbols all throughout the chart. Those Mm -hmm. are going to be the planets. Okay. And if you go to the inner circle of the chart, right? you're going to see these little numbers kind of denoting each pie slice in this chart. And you'll notice that these numbers go one through 12 Mm -hmm. in order. Those are denoting which house we're looking at. Okay. Did that make sense? Did that answer the question? Hopefully. Yes. I'm, you know, I'm like visualizing it and I'm, you know, I'm grasping it. I think probably if I, if I looked it up, like you said, I probably would get even a better cause I'm a visual learner, you know? So I, I, but I, I get, I get it. I get it. I, you know, but it's like, um, I think it's, it's, I think like you said, like the first thing people should do is look up their birth chart, put it in front of them, listen to this video, you know, and, or listen to this podcast and then, you know, go through with you, you know, as you're, you, you're speaking right now. And, you know, and then when you are reading all of this and you're going through the houses and the signs and the planets, what information are people going to start to, to, to get through the reading of their, their birth chart and the readings of their, their signs and planets and their houses? Yeah. So this is where shameless plug here because truly I created this for myself and now it's what I have as my freebie if people sign up for my email list Mm -hmm. this is literally what helped me to learn oh very (laughs) cool so that's why I now offer it to other people not everyone wants to go to to the level of depth that I have and I understand that but this is an incredible reference sheet I I mean I am completely self-taught and this is how I know what I know so right I would recommend whether it's mine or someone else's. I just think it's when you're trying to Google these things, it gets very convoluted. There's a lot of different information all over the place. It's very piecemealed. That's why I took a lot of different resources and compiled them into one resource altogether. So I call it my planets, signs and houses cheat sheet. Right. literally going to tell you exactly what I just shared about the planets, the signs and the houses. So you understand again 
what each of these things is even telling you first yes. and foremost. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to break down the definitions, these like very brief, they're not overwhelming. You don't have like five pages per thing. It's a couple sentences right? Per, ev for every single component that we just right. mentioned for the sun, for the moon, for Aquarius, for Pisces, for Gemini, like every single thing, every single house has this brief breakdown and it's also going to have the symbol next to it. So you don't right. have to be like, wait, which one is this again? It'll literally mm -hmm. say like, oh, okay, that's what Gemini symbol looks like. So you don't have to be confused no matter where you pulled your chart from. And I think this is going to be really helpful because having your chart next to you and having this res uh, resource sheet next to you is going to be so helpful to literally just go back and forth and see what you're looking at. And I put the planets mm -hmm. in order of what you're going to want to look at first and foremost right? to answer your question. So it starts with the sun, then it's going to go to the moon, and then it's going to share all of the definitions of the personal planets is what they're called. The ones that are going to have a bigger uh, impact on you personally, I'll say, versus right. the generational planets, which not to say they don't have an impact on you, but they're exactly what they sound like. They move more slowly in relation yeah. to Earth. It's the further out planets, as right. you would imagine. It's Pluto, it's Saturn, it's Jupiter. And they are, because they move more slowly, there's something that you share in common with people who are around your age. Right. So they're not as personal by definition. Yeah. The personal planets are much more specific where like I can be born in the same year as somebody, but unless they were born within a couple of days of me, they're probably not going to have the same Mercury sign as right. me. They're probably not going to have the same Venus placement as me. Right. So I put them in order of what you're going to want to look at first. And, and you know, and every day things change. So the where the planets are, the planets, you know, everything is changing, evolving. The moon is different every day, and you know, our you know what's what's happening in our lives kind of change. The astrology changes. So when people, when 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 the moon is in a different area, the stars are in a different area, the planets are you know in in different. How do we how do we read that, and how do we know? Is it because we understand now what each planet means, and we understand you know now what the moon means and the sun means and you know the value it has and we understand our sign which explains our personality our characteristics and so forth and then our houses and we're able to put that together and get a gist of what's in store in the future and who we are now yes and I love that you ask that because I think this is where you can take this information to the level of depth that you want to Mm -hmm. You can 100% use this chart or this reference sheet the way that I use it, which is to do exactly what you just said. Right. I've taken it to that level of depth where I understand the fundamentals in and out at this point where I can just look at the chart of the day and have an idea of how that's going to impact me. Right. But I think to to answer the question cuz i don't i don't feel that most people want to go to that level of depth they might want to know that information but they don't necessarily <laughs> want to learn it to that mm -hmm. level of depth i think where i find that most of my clients end up using it um i know the people that follow my email list because i send out uh i send out emails like truly twice a month once mm -hmm. every new moon and once every full moon yeah and this is where I think a lot of people find value in it because quite frankly, I don't personally believe we need to be living our lives so rigidly by this because then it just becomes another system that we're operating within. Okay. I think it's really valuable when you are in a season of life that you're like, I need some context as to yeah. what's going on here, which is how I found this. That's right. when I was getting into this, I was going through my Saturn return. I had the um, eclipses hitting my first and seventh houses, like there were really, really massive life-changing transits going on for me right. at this time. And so it made sense. And I just felt so much less crazy right. <laughs> when I found the system. Now I don't feel the need at this stage in my life, I don't feel the need to rely so heavily on what's going on in the sky right now. Yeah. It's more so that I want to know what sun season we're in. Mm -hmm. So like right now, as we record this, it's Scorpio season. And again, this is how most of my clients use it. 
you don't need to know where Jupiter is. You don't need to know where Mercury, like you don't need usually th yeah. that level of depth on a daily basis. Quite frankly, right. it would be all consuming. You, you, would yeah. be, you wouldn't really be doing anything else if that's what you were doing. Right, right. Um, it's more so just like, for me, understanding, for example, Aries. If you hear Aries and you know anything about astrology, you're going to recognize that this is one of the most energetic signs of the Zodiac. It's all about taking action. It's like, it's the first sign of the Zodiac. It's very much about starting things. It's spring, all of these yeah. things. For me, I'm a Taurus rising. So I know that this is actually highlighting when it's Aries season every single year, it's highlighting my 12th house, my most internal introspective. I actually don't want to be socializing. I actually don't want to be doing all these things. I'm still tapped into that Aries energy and motivation, but the way I'm channeling it is not the way that I would necessarily just read it if I Googled what Aries meant. Right. right. I'm doing all of this behind the scenes and internally and in my own personal space, not with other people because of the way that it's impacting my chart specifically. Got so it. I think that's where I would recommend if you do want to take it to that level and apply it to your daily life, you can always take it deeper than that is what I'll just say. But yeah. that's such a helpful place to start. Again, don't bite off more than you can chew and then end up not using it all. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, just start by recognizing what sun sign season is this? Yeah. What house is this highlighting for me? okay, that means these themes are most likely to present every single year this season for okay. me. Does that make sense? I hope it does. That was a lot It of does. So it's like, it could be like, so when these signs align, it's like kind of repetitive. Like when in the, in the same seasons, when these things align, this is how you're going to feel. This is what's going to be going on. And these are the possibilities that, you know, if you follow in this area, you know, these things will probably be the most motivating and the best things for you right now in your life, so forth. Yes. So I will say the context, this is where the other planets and where they are, because we're only talking about the sun. With yeah, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this is where the context of every season is going to be different. There's always going to be that added layer of nuance to it, but it gives you like, I think everything in astrology, it's, it's layers, you know, yeah. it's the highest layer that you're going to want to look at because overarchingly, this is the vibe. Yeah. The details of how that vibe is going to show up is going to look different. Obviously, you know, every, every October is not the same right. for your life. Yeah. Yeah. But I think when you start to look at it this way, you really can see these very clear patterns. And I know that a lot of the clients that I've started with by reading their charts and then moved on to being those kind of seasonal forecasts, if you right. will, that's mm -hmm. what I do for them. I literally do exactly what we just talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Share with them what their forecast for each season is. And they're, there are a couple clients that I have that I've worked with for over a year at this point doing that. And it's really cool to see because I now have this evidence of, hey, remember last Scorpio yeah. season? Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing a pattern here. It's showing up differently for you because you're a different person in 2024 than you were in 2023. Right. But can't we see this common thread? And now you can take that into next Scorpio season and every Scorpio season after this. I like that. Now there's three different types, right? You have your generalized, which is the first one. Like, so how many, like you have, you teach a couple different, you offer a couple different levels, right? So that you have your, your generalized one, right? Is it ge just the overall? The... For a birth chart reading, you mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. that's like the first level, like the birth chart reading mm -hmm. and the birth chart reading will tell somebody what? The birth chart reading to me is really just a map of who you are. Okay. It's a self-discovery tool, essentially. Okay. It's showing you a screenshot of where the planets were, what signs they were in mm -hmm. at the time of your birth. Right. In relation to where you were on Earth, which is why your location matters when you share it for astrology. And that, again, because everything in astrology is like each planet has an energy assigned to it, each sign has an energy assigned yeah. to it and a different kind of archetype, if you will. Right. It's basically saying these are the archetypal roles and characteristics yeah. that you have inherently within you and what at what concentrations and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so it's telling you, hey, this is this is the reflection of the universe and how it's showing up within you. That's right. what the birth chart is telling you. 
And the next one is you get a little bit more deeper on which one, what is that called again? Just refresh me. So it's, I wouldn't even say necessarily deeper though it is in a lot of ways. It's more so like a, it's a system that adds on, if you will. Okay. Human design mm-hmm. is what it's yeah. called. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people come to me and they just start with this because they've already had a birth chart reading previously, yeah. not with me. And that's completely fine. Um, but I do always recommend if you haven't had a birth chart reading, whether it's with me or someone else, start with that before yeah. you get a human design reading. Human design partially plays off of astrology. Yeah. But it also plays into a lot of other systems, the chakra system, Chinese I Ching, Kabbalah, um, quantum physics, like a lot of different systems that all look at energy, essentially. Right. And it's saying, hey, let's put all of these together and yeah. come up with a really, really nuanced map of your energetic makeup because it's so unique. And this is where if you Google human design, I mean, even just knowing the very basics can be super valuable. But I yeah. will say this is one where there's quite frankly just not a lot of information readily available on the internet. Okay. This is one where it is much more valuable to start with a reading. Yeah. And then decide if you want to go deeper. <laughs> and the, the next deeper one, what is that called? So I, after that, those are the only two that I have. Oh, okay. So there's two then. Okay. Yeah. Those gotcha. are the two systems that I work with. The next layer, I guess I would say of working with me that is deeper in terms of just getting support is yeah. I have plenty of people who have gotten both of those readings and then they've got the bug, you know, they're like, I need to know more this. I can tell, I can feel, I can see already just knowing this level, how valuable this is. And so that's where my coaching comes into play. It's not just giving a reading. It's actually right. breaking down that information with people over an extended period of time, because the reality is it's too much to bite off in one hour of a reading. Exactly. If you want to go to a certain level of depth, you need time and space to integrate this. That's yeah, Because I knew there were three was different, different different things that you offered. I just wasn't sure. That makes sense because there's so much that astrology offers. You know, it's, it's very hard to just like in such a short period of time to be able to take all that information. And in. there's right. many times when I've I've gone and I've gotten readings and, and things like that. But they give you so much information that it's an overload. And yes. then and then what happens is that you forget a lot of it, because if you're not writing notes or if they're not sending you after notes, some people will send you na- notes afterwards. They will record it and then they will send you like notes and stuff. It's you're not going to remember everything you you they, they've told you. And then and then what, you know, then, right. you know, so you only remember certain things that stick with you and, and that's it. You know, so if you have coaching and you have someone going over in it little by little and explaining it and really going deeper into depth and then talking about the present and how it affects you, then it starts to really, you're able to really start to understand it, feel it and and live it really. 100%. It sinks in on a whole different level when you do that. Yeah. It, that's exactly why I do it because I think a lot of people are interested. Not everyone is going to be intrigued enough right. by it as I was to do that on their own, but they can see the value of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, so how, how did it change you as a person when you started to go into astrology? You know, how, what changes in your life, you know, positive changes did you see that weren't there before? I mean, I 180'd my life. I completely. I, I, I always say it's like I simultaneously changed every single layer of my life Yeah, and just became more of myself at the same time, right. which almost sound counter to one another. But it was like, again, how I mentioned, I had so many things going on astrologically, which basically just gave me so much validation because I felt crazy when I found these systems I was like who am I how yeah. have I gotten to this age and I have no idea who I am as a person I don't know what I care about I don't know what I'm actually good at versus what other people just use me for <laughs> you yeah. know it was like I was so disconnected from my internal self versus this external facade yeah. that I had been playing for the majority of my life and gotten really good at. And it was like, the lines were so blurred. I was so confused. What was me and what was the, the version of me that I was just presenting to other people. Right. And 
So for me, these systems really helped me to come back home to who I actually was. It was like a remembering almost and a validation. And I always tell people, and I've, I've had people share this with me recently as well, that this was their experience. It's astrology. When somebody is able to mirror this back to you for the first time, it really feels like they're putting words to something you've never been able to articulate, but you've always felt. Right. And it's, I mean, I, if anyone has had that experience with or without astrology, that is the kind of thing that is, you can't deny that feeling yeah. in your bones. And it, it makes you want to change. It makes you want to be more yeah. of yourself. And I mean, I quit my successful corporate job in the process of this. Um, obviously not everyone needs to become an astrologer <laughs> if they get interested <laughs> in these systems, but I, it, it was something that did come really naturally to me. I, don't know why my brain retains this information the way that it does. I do think that it is because it's pattern recognition and it's geometry. And yeah, those are things that I was already naturally gifted at. But I, yeah. I do think that it's it's just one of those things that I was able to come into these parts of myself that I had been neglecting. Right. That's amazing. That's amazing. And I definitely think astrology can definitely do that for people because it, it holds so much valuable information and, and it gives you an idea of who you are. People search for years trying to figure out their identity, who they are, what their true calling is, what's their mission, what's their purpose. And people hunt the, their entire lives and we're labelized so much and we have all these labels. But when you take all those labels away, who are you? You know, and that's what people struggle with because they are all these labels but they don't really know who they are inside something's not right and they're not happy and you know or when you stripe all those those labels away from them and say who are you they just look at you very dumbfounded it's like ah uh, ah uh, uh, you know, like, you know, and so it, understanding yourself and being able to look at astrology and being able to understand who you are as a person can really give you an idea of, of what you truly are, your, your true identity and what your calling in life is. And then you could start really developing you as a person the way you should be, the, the way that will your inner self will truly be happy. And that will make you shine, I think. Completely agree. And I, I do feel called to also say, this is where you you also have to be careful and recognize that astrology also has labels and also has things that you can over identify with. I think right. one of the biggest problems, for lack of a better word, in the world today is people over identifying with yeah. any identity, any label, any thing that you can identify with and and really start to get more into that thing or that label, to your point, than yeah recognizing that you're nuanced and every single person on this planet is multifaceted. Yeah. And I think that's, that's something that's just worth watching if you do get into this, because yeah. that's a whole nother conversation, but people can uh, get into that as well, where it's like, Oh, I'm an, I'm a Gemini. So sorry. That's just how I am. <laughs> like, no, every single person has Gemini in their chart, whether you have planets there or not, and yeah. person has it in them. You're here to learn how to maybe work through that energy in a different way if you have a lot of planets there, but it yeah. doesn't mean that it's an excuse. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, if you had to take today's conversation and you really wanted to, you know, uh, point out some important takeaways to the audience, what are some things you'd like to emphasize on? I think that I would say if you are interested in going deeper into astrology, like you have been intrigued by it, maybe you can't afford a reading or you've had one and you still want to go deeper, whatever the reason may be, know that you are capable of learning this. You don't have to be an astrologer. You don't have to do it for a living right. to understand it enough to make sense out of your chart. And so I think that's one of the biggest points that I would say is finding, whether it's my resource sheet or or something else, finding a system where it's going to help you approach your birth chart mm -hmm. in a very systematic way is my recommendation. Don't try to learn this from 17 different sources at one time. Yeah. Most people are not going to be able to make sense of it in their brains if they do it that way having a, a specific way of just biting off each piece. There's no rush. 
Right. quite frankly. You don't have to learn how to do this overnight. It took Yeah. me several years to learn Right. how to do this. Yeah. So that's what I would also say. Give yourself time. There's no rush. And just be curious with it. Let yourself play with it. And I will tell you right now, I'm I'm five years into this and I still learn new things when I look at my chart today. And I have no doubt that I will 20 years from now. Right. A hundred percent. Now we went over some of the services you, you, you provide. Can you just go over briefly of all the different things that you do and what's on your website? For sure. Thank you. Um, so I do birth chart readings, which is what we're talking about right now. That's your Mm -hmm. astrology. So that's, again, the self-discovery piece, the map of who you are, characteristic by characteristic. And then I also do human design readings. So that's the one that ties all of those different energetic systems together. And to me, it's much more uh, practical application. It's like Yeah. once you know the characteristics from your birth chart, now let's understand energetically what that means when it comes to how you can find the most flow in your life versus where you're going to probably run into energetic resistance of Right. some sort. And then the last thing that I offer and I would say like the most uh, intimate way to work with me is a coaching container after you've had readings. If you haven't had readings yet, that's what the container starts with, just getting both of your charts read. Yeah. Um, and then it's working together. Usually these are going to be customized, but I have a four month package and an eight month package if you don't want to deal with the details Mm -hmm. that already exist, um, where we just work together and basically just break all of this down and, and play it out live as you go through your life, because that's where you really start to get real examples of how these things are showing up. And where can people find you? So clairecompagna.com, my website is going to be the best place. Uh, my Instagram account, Claire.compagna is another place that I would say, if you just want more free information, that's a good spot to, to look as well. And then, um, as I mentioned, this is going to be on my website. It's also linked in my bio on my Instagram. But if you are interested in downloading that planet signs and houses cheat sheet that I just referenced a million times, in this <laughs> episode, um, I would look at the link in my bio or it's right there on my homepage. It's signing up for my email list. Again, I seriously am like the opposite of a spammer. I probably under email <laughs> my email list because I only do it every new moon and every full moon. So you'll get insights for those, which I think a lot of my clients who are interested in this stuff, that also helps them Yeah. to confirm that what they are learning on the side is actually making sense and is accurate. Right. Um, but that's where you can get access to that cheat sheet. I love it. And this is probably great for, especially now that the new year is coming, people finding out like, you know, what's ahead, what's in store for them, you know, where they're headed, you know, and, and, and really understand, you know, you know, what they could do to ask, actually enhance their, their future in 2025. 100%. And I I will say to that point, I am booked out for the end of the year. It's the middle of November right now. And I don't have capacity for readings um, until January at this point. But I will say to your point right there, you're spot on. So many people love starting fresh in a new year Mm -hmm. with this information under their belt, because I am one of the astrologers that does send the reference sheet and the recording of the reading. Like you Uh said, (laughs) it's not going to be lost on you after we talk. Um, So if you are wanting to gift this to anybody or yourself, then I would say, feel free to just reach out to me. Instagram is probably the best way. Just DM me because I have a limited number, which is why they're not going to be on my website, but I do offer uh, gift certificates. So if you want to buy this as a present, it is an awesome gift to give to a significant other, a parent, a child, a sibling, whatever it may be. Oh, awesome. That sounds great. That is a great present to give somebody. Wow. This has been amazing. Thank you so much, Claire, for coming on the show today. I really enjoyed this. I think it's so necessary for people to understand because like it's, it it is a complicated topic, you know, and when you break it down the way you did today, you understand it a lot easier and especially having a coach that goes through it step by step, I think is the best thing. Like I personally would want someone going through it little by little and then, you know, explain to me what each time I see that person, what's in store, what 
what changed and so forth and really, you know, understanding, you know, what's going on and where you're headed and things you could change to make things better. So this is, I'm really glad you came on the show to talk about this today. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I, it was a fun conversation and really this is, this is how I fell in love with these systems myself. So yeah, yeah, I agree. I think having somebody to guide you, having a mentor is so valuable. And if you genuinely oh, sure. want to learn these systems, that's going to be the best way to do it. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Claire. This has been awesome. I can't wait to talk to you next time. Thank you. Same. You have a great day. You too.